Hello to our viewers at home. Hello, Rob Lightman. Hello. We're in our first steps in Kabbalah's program, and today the topic that people always ask questions about, what is the meaning of there's no coercion in spirituality? But first let's be reminded along the way that we have to remember where we're we going. What is spirituality before we say there's no coercion in it? Rav, spirituality is a reality in which which exists above our reality and it operates according to the law of bestowal of love and our reality uh, acts as a reality of reception and hatred self-love and hatred of others and spirituality acts according to self-hate and love of others it's opposite so what does it mean that in our world that we know there's no such thing as spirituality there isn't that is why what we see right now we call corporeality sometimes I see people that really really love others are really contributing from their time their energy their money there's people who are sitting and thinking good of the world and you're saying to, to me that oh, none of that is spirituality? Rav, no, that's corporeality. This certainly comes only out of it making it feel that, feel good that way, or it's worthwhile for them to be like that. And when spirituality, someone does something, if someone does something in spirituality, it doesn't feel good. In spirituality, someone doesn't do something because he wants to do it, but because it needs to be done. It sounds like going to work. Yes, that's why spirituality is called spiritual work. So where does that person have fuel from? Out of feeling the importance of this work. So you could say that also from the importance he enjoys. Yes, correct. But to start with, against his will to receive, against his nature, and what he's started, he goes opposite it meaning he has a nature now that he's learning how to get to know and at a certain stage he says to himself he comes to a certain conclusion I have to emerge out of my nature yes and then he goes out and gets a different reward a reward called importance yes if that's the fuel then it's considered that he enters spirituality yes meaning no matter what he feels or wants he's above that with importance Yes, and there are people in our world who have to start with, from birth, as they say, importance for spirituality. And they develop such a, an attitude on their own, wanting to come to the nature of bestowing. Wanting to come to the nature of bestowing. Okay. Now, along the way, before one comes to this feeling, this knowledge, is there no coercion? Coercion, it depends on what you call coercion. Where I was born, is it called that I was born with coercion or not? As far as I'm concerned, for sure, yes. I don't know what was before, and I'm in this state. So I was born in certain qualities. Is that coercion? For sure. Where I am now in life, and I don't know what will happen in a moment, and what's going to happen. Is that coercion? That's the given state. I wasn't asked. So I developed with attributes that I didn't choose and now from those attributes I'm responding to what is happening around me every given moment. Is that coercion or not? That's a question because I don't feel it as coercion. I feel like I'm choosing. The fact that you feel is not important. We're talking about facts. The fact that a person feels, that's all, you know, what we feel. Yes, but if I look at it, my nature as a scientist, it's certainly coercion. In short, in nature, everything comes in coercion in nature. There's nothing that you could say about it that a person has free choice, a choice to do this or that, but rather what appears to us that there's choice is just from lack of knowledge. Okay, I accept that. Therefore, we are all like still vegetative and animal, 
like all the rest of the parts of nature, we are in necessary actions which pass by us, obligate us, and one, none of us has any free choice, any free action or free thought. So all of that is called coercion. If you call it coercion, coercion. If not, not. I don't know what you give coercion. We usually say about something that we see that it's truly against my desire. Yes? Let's say, I want to do something. Someone comes and, sa- and doesn't let me do that. So he's coercing me. Yes, so, but if not, I don't interpret it as coercion. It all depends on my definition. So let's say, you just explain right now, it, I'm, it's acceptable on me what you explain. You explain there's something I don't see, it's my nature, which coerces me with all my decisions, desires, and all that happens to me. Yes, and then it seems to me from my habit in this nature that I'm free. But it's not free. I behave according to the way I'm built, and I do so, and I'm accustomed to it, and so on and so forth. Meaning there's nothing that I have that is of my own, but rather it's all programmed, planned, and coursed upon me. You know, meaning it's pretty clear if I look at a nature program and I see some leopard that's pouncing on a gazelle or something like that, it's very natural. It's supposed to, he doesn't choose to do that. And me, the same thing. If I feel that way, I'm probably also that way. Exactly. Now, this is all of humanity. It always has been, and it probably this is the reality. Now, what is you said there are people who are born with a, an inclination, a tendency for spirituality? Yes? So that's also coercion? Yes? That beginning point. Yes, one has a desire for new cars, one has a desire for good food, and the third one has a desire... Well, we all have all the desires, of course, but this leading desire is in spirituality. Yes? Wonderful. Where does he have choice here? Where could you say that he's not in coercion? You can't. He's being coerced. So he's also in coercion. Yes? Good. I brought a quote of Balasulam to emphasize this point. He says, Man needs to increase the forces on the way of coercion. And this is what they said. He is coerced until he says, I want. Can you explain that? In light of what we spoke, spoke of right now? Rav, a person works with his will, with his desire, feeling that this desire is not in him, but he wants to be in it and accustoms and accustoms himself coercively this desire until he says, I want, let's say, I don't like to drink what I'm drinking now. Yes. But the doctor told me that you need to drink this. I accept it. His, I accept his counsel and starts to implement it. And it's called that I'm coursing myself on it, right? Yes. By the fact that I course and course and course myself this way, I get used to it. And habit becomes second nature. And then I start to feel flavors and desires of mine and all kinds of things that are no longer repulsive to me to the point where later I myself go and and get it. That same drink that at first was disgusting to me. Meaning if tomorrow someone doesn't give you this drink, you'll say, oh, I'm missing something in life. Yes, for sure. Okay, so let's take a, a wonderful example. Let's take this. I'm a new student. I studied the first campus, maybe the second campus. And in addition to the regular life I have, there's a very nice community, society, that's very nice to be in. They talk about spirituality, they read books, they do workshops. You feel that there's something good in this society. Okay? How now do I take that as... If we look at the beginning of the conversation, this is also in coercion. They brought me there thus far. It was not, not on me. Here, From here, how do I start to coerce myself? What does it mean that I make myself do that? Rav, 
I don't think that this is already coercion. Because if I enter a society, and this society puts certain conditions before me, I can remain in those conditions, and I really, really want to be in that community, in that society, then I accept them inevitably and coerce myself to observe those conditions. So it's not that they're coercing me. They're giving me the choice, yes or no. And I accept and coerce myself. So let's say the only choice I have is that when I'm in this society, I don't talk about nonsense and irrelevant things, but I talk about what the Kabbalists write and the topics of the workshops. I have a connection between us and things that maybe I don't understand, but I agree to talk about. Yes? So how do I advance from here? Let's say I want to come to the goal. I want to reach the destiny. How do I advance from here? How does one need to either course or not course himself? Rav, if you come to a special society, to a special teacher, which points out the path to you, to where all of humanity needs to advance, we're talking about the wisdom of Kabbalah, not about something else. Yes, of course. Then you need to take all these conditions and begin to process them in the society, in the study, and in your inner work. I do that, and I see slowly, slowly that really it, I like it more and more. Two flavors, just like you said with a cup of tea. That's for the time being. And later, where we talked about this in one of our meetings, then we'll also have the sense, and I'll have, uh, I can't tolerate uh, the friends, and the teacher, and the path, and all kinds of things like that. But nevertheless, out of my habit, I remain, and again, several other such states. So what's next? To just stay? That's it? No. You discover slowly, slowly during the study that you don't just need to change yourself in order to adapt yourself to nature, but rather you also need to help others, to all of humanity, to adapt themselves to nature, to be an integral part of nature, of the general nature. That's a point we will get to in a second, but... At the moment, I just see that I'm distancing from all of humanity. All of humanity thinks that they're in certain states, and I'm starting to feel that even a certain pride, that maybe I'm a little bit more than others. Look, when you go to become a musician, and you need to do all kinds of exercises 10 hours a day, yes? So you also distance yourself from everyone, and you also only think about your profession. And, but maybe... In a profession, like in other professions, other than the wisdom of Kabbalah, you get support from humanity. They understand what you're engaged in. When you're going to succeed, to be rewarded, and so on and so forth. And here they don't know what you're doing. They don't understand. They think it's some something very obscured and there's nothing in it. And that's how it is. So what does it mean to start thinking about humanity? You said before, the next stage is to start thinking about humanity, how to advance humanity and bring them closer also to the same system, the same integral system that you're discovering in nature. How can I? Again, I can't coerce them. Our topic is coercion and spirituality. No, you need to explain this to them in a beautiful, good way this is a profession to be this way. You need to present a plan of nature and explain that it's not dependent on you and that you're just opening up for them, this thing. But it's not that, God forbid, it comes from you. It comes from nature. Just like a scientist, some physicist who discovers, or let's say some... Meteorolo meteoro meteorologist who discovers what's going to be tomorrow. So he discovers that tomorrow there's going to be a flood. So do we curse him for telling us that? No. We say thank you very much. Maybe we can prepare for it. It's the same thing here. You're not to blame for all these things happening. 
You just want to show them what would happen if we'll be this way or what would happen if we behave differently. Okay, so I learned this art and I learned how to say the right words and how to say it in a way that doesn't hurt people, maybe on the contrary, brings them some kind of reward or profit. Altogether, you're opening up the picture of nature for them because we're in nature and how nature responds to us and how we can maybe through all kinds of actions of our own benefit ourselves through this system of nature. Okay, we're going to return to that in a second. I just want to continue with me. I'm developing spiritually. I'm a student. And while I'm doing this work with others, I learn about myself. Yes? What do I learn about myself while trying to disseminate this wisdom? It's not that simple, and it's not so immediate for beginners. As through my actions, these are other actions, I see different responses from nature. That's already what we call revealed providence. It's not that simple. But we want to reach that. I hear you telling your students many times, write, do, create, don't leave it to yourselves. Take it outwards. Rav, this is in order to help others because we are in an integral system, a global system, and therefore the more people like us will be engaged in coming closer to nature and to enter correctly into the general mechanism of nature, then we will be able to all truly develop nicely and correctly. Again, I'm asking a very egoistic question. What does it give me that I need to do this and to try to explain? What do I get from this? that you will know that tomorrow, let's say, there will be a tsunami, and in the place that there's a tsunami, you are, God forbid, then you need to run away from there. Altogether, it's to your benefit, as far as running away from the bad. It could be even more than that, also to get closer to the good. In another place, you learn that sandwiches will be dropping from the heavens. So you go there in order to grab a few sandwiches. Is that really, or is it just changing my attitude towards reality that lets me see that? Your change of your way of seeing reality opens up your ability to see reality that way. Where does this thing called spirituality begin? So, so far we talked about coercion and all the different forms of uh, actions. There's coercion. What is that there is no coercion in spirituality. Spirituality is considered a special attitude towards the general force of nature, which is called the Creator, God, nature, a special attitude that we have where we start to receive this force as the force of good that does good to everyone. And as much as we come to it to be in identity with it, to identify with it, then by that we are in the right development. And where is the freedom there? Where could you say that I'm not being coerced there? If I understand this, if I feel this, then I'm free already from coercion. I, out of understanding and my feeling, my, my on my own, I go and do it. So again, you could say that I'm moving to a different coercion, coercion of bestowal. Prior to that reception, what's the difference between coercion and freedom? These are the same actions, just that I agree with this. My agreement depends on my knowledge. Oh, I agree. It's not that I decide what will be. It's not. I just agree. The fact that you're defining, deciding, it's an even more advanced step where you can do it such that even you decide your actions in nature that will be so. That sounds like really, here it sounds that like I'm really, oh, you see, that's not just like that freedom. Yes, yes. Meaning from knowing nature, the upper nature will say, the nature of bestowal, I already choose or decide what will be my next action. Yes? And there you could say that there's no coercion in spirituality? There, you're the one who's coercing. So there's coercion of my own. Yes? You coerce. You decide, let's say. 
don't coerce. Decide. That's called the righteous decides and the creator observes it. Yes. So we want to go down to the relevance of the time that we're in. And this is very actual. It'll probably be actual for a long time. I don't have to wait for some tsunami, as you gave in the example. There is one now. There is from nature, from the upper providence, some gift came called the virus. And all of a sudden, all of humanity is stopping, going into their homes and starting to think, wait a minute, what's going on here? We didn't plan this. This was completely not in our work plans of the production we were doing. All of a sudden, we're in such a reality. Yes, it's clear that it's from above, for sure. Now, I, the small student who studied here for a few months, I look at this and I say, well, what do we do with it? Now you're asking me, yes? Oh, so you're coming to me as a student to a teacher and you're asking, what do we do with this? Yes, first of all, we learn that it comes from nature. It comes from nature because we invited such a negative response. We could have invited the same phenomena in a positive way. And we will talk about that. That that same virus, which we are afraid of and even die and run away from, and it limits us, we could have accepted it with our open arms. Simply in that way. I'll draw that picture for me for a second. It's not clear. This virus wants us to connect less with one another. Connect less or more? Less. Oh, a physical connection. Yes. We understand that to the extent in which we don't behave nicely with one another, it is worthwhile for us to distance from one another and to develop a nice and good attitude towards one another and then come closer to one another. Every place I am with people in, uh, that I'm in contact with people, I stop myself from using my ego and try to relate to others for their benefit and not for my own benefit. I am seemingly willing to serve them, to seemingly be good to everyone, even though it contradicts my nature. Yes, of course. So why would I do that? So I start to understand how my behavior, which is as such, helps me build the correct relations in the society, that it can help me build new relations in this society between me and the children, and the children between them, and the children with the teachers, and I with my colleagues at work, and every single place, and between states, and between the whole world. And then we don't have to come to a state in which we are sick and dying and in isolation and not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. But on the contrary, we start to judge between us what we need to leave from all our engagements upon earth and what's not worthwhile for us because it's just a waste of nature and corrupting the air and so on and so forth. And we can make our lives good. Now we're not in such a state, but rather the virus is obligating us forcefully to stop working, to stop doing these things out of being coerced, no choice, we will try to do exactly what we have to do in order to live, to survive. In such a way, it is now doing it. We could have done that on the side of good. Now, let's say, how could we have done it on the side of good? All of a sudden, all of humanity would start to, to isolate themselves and enter each into their own homes. No, no, why isolate? On the contrary, let us see how, to what extent we are corrupting nature, how we are polluting the air and the water and so forth. We see that it just hasn't settled on our hearts so much. We all know it. The eyes see it, the pollution and the destruction. And there are endless programs about it and everything. But inside we continue to buy and consume and 
No, 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 no. We will do this with a healthy uh, intellect that we don't have to do this and that and that, that by this we're destroying nature and by this we're not buying anything except for our pride and so forth. Do you hear the birds? You see, I haven't heard them. I don't know. For 20 years I'm living in, in this room. I haven't heard birds outside, just cars and honks and factories. And now the birds, the honking of the cars were replaced by the honking of the birds, yeah? So what's bad with it? No, no, it's not bad. And it's also clear that the, the world won't return to what it was before. Why? Why? Two weeks ago, you were still resisting that when I said that the world will not return to what it was. What? How could it be? Soon we're going back. Where is this? Where, where are my businesses? Forget about all the businesses, the imaginary ones. There's nothing. In six months, I will ask you. We won't go back to them, but I'll ask about them. You won't think that you're going back. You will understand already that there is no return. That's good, but that all happened because we got a blow or a gift, however you interpret it. How many dozens of years have I spoke about that? At least 20 years, I remember. And how much have you read about this in the writings of the Kabbalists? Well, so what can you do? Really, what can you do? After all, this won't end. If we don't learn our uh, conclusion from this, then how how will we come to the point where we will want it and not to have another course blow on us? Rav, dissemination. You have to disseminate what's written in the writings of the Kabbalists. You have to use today a special attitude towards what's happening, towards the fear and anxiety and despair and misunderstanding People are truly like little children crying, standing in the middle of the room and crying that he's been left. That's how all of humanity is today. From the greatest to the smallest. All of them. Let them hear what the Kabbalists are saying, what Kabbalah has to say. After all, through the last 20 years at least, I'm saying what needs to be done. And it's not me, but I'm taking it from the books of the wisdom of Kabbalah. Well, I hope that nevertheless we will advertise it and it will be clear that that is where the key to all of the good life is. And if not, we will have to go in the, for, in the path of course and like you're saying, many stages and unpleasant ones. How do we make it to settle on the heart? Now we have help from above. How do we make it so our dissemination will settle on our hearts? for it to sit on our hearts that's a big problem but at least it somehow will be accepted inevitably from no choice but at least receive it and then through habit another day and another day and another day it will be People, if we don't respond correctly, we will soon be in fear of a fly because it also carries the coronavirus. I'm not even talking about cats, dogs that we have in our homes. Mice that are running around from place to place. How do you know what they have? Cockroaches. The air is filled with all kinds of little microbes. They too will be all in, filled with viruses. We don't understand where we are, what we're creating by our egos. We have come to a state in which we're done with, that we don't have some forgiveness from nature. As we relate to babies, to small ones, where we forgive them for everything. We need to already receive the intellect and to be big. And if not it'll be very bad for us. So let's summarize our program, Rav. How do we come to a state, thanks to this relevance of what's happening in the world now, how do we come to a state where we choose this good, of good systems of relations between us, from which we will discover what we need to discover?
How do we get to that now? Rav, how do we get through study and dissemination of the wisdom of Kabbalah? Or through blows, one or the other. From above, we're being pressed, pushed, and will be very bad for us if we don't equip ourselves with the proper th thought process and feelings that are new, that will be able to come from the study of the wisdom of Kabbalah, only for the Kabbalists. Thank you very much, Rav Leitman. Thank you all. And I really hope that we will succeed to bring people closer to the plan of nature and for them to use it in a nice way. Good luck.